All right, welcome back to another episode of the Power Sports and Memorabilia Show. I am your host, Matt Powers. Thank you again for joining me. Please visit the website, powersportsandmemorabilia.com. Also, me follow over there on Instagram, at Powers Autographs. With the recent explosion in the sports collectible ticket market, I thought it would be a good time to put together uh, a video and bring some clarity to the subject. Um, you know, here are some topics we're going to be discussing today. Uh, number one, why tickets have become popular. Or two, is this a fad? Are they actually collectible? Number three, the types of tickets people are collecting. And then number four, we will venture into the future and see what the ticket market looks like in the near future. All right, number one, first off, let's talk about why have tickets become so popular lately? Seems like you see them everywhere on everybody's Instagram posts and everybody's talking about it. Well, much of this has to do with, you know, all collectibles in general are having a renewed interest. Pokemon and sports cards, for example, have taken off in popularity in the last few years and have become more mainstream. Tickets are no different. Profits are a big driving force of that. No doubt many people are getting involved because they see the potential of huge sums of money to be made. And I say huge sums. I mean, very few people are retiring from this, but there is good money to be made. Collectors and investors are smart for the most part. You know, they can see that tickets, unlike most collectibles, aren't increasing in supply. Most sports teams have gone towards digital for getting fans their tickets. Everything is done through the league's mobile app now. While all those characteristics are important in understanding why tickets have become so popular lately, there really is more to it than any other collectible on the market. I'm gonna get to that here in just a second. I'm gonna be piggybacking off a recent comment of known ticket collector who you all love to hate and hate to love, Darren Ravel. Just a recent one that he made here. But he, he brings up some valid points that I want to share with you, and I thought these were very, very interesting. Number one, this is a good reason why tickets have become popular lately, is many collectors were physically at these events. There's a huge organic and emotional connection between what happened at that event and the collector. For example, say you were a big Los Angeles Dodgers fan and you happen to be at game one of the 1988 World Series versus the Oakland Athletics. Then you know that game where Kirk Gibson hit that magical home run off Dennis Eckersley. Man, he went around the bases like we all do as crippled uh, softball players in that game. I mean, it's just an incredible home run. Everybody remembers that moment. Even if you weren't at the game, you were probably watching on TV or you were listening on the radio. Uh, definitely dating myself with the radio there, but man, there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong with listening to the game on the radio. It's just something different about it. But when someone you know, brings up this game or you see the home run on TV, you're instantly transported back to that memory you had created in 1988. The ticket, the physical ticket in your hand, that's your portal back to that game. All right, number two, there's true scarcity in tickets. You know, yes, there may have been 50,000 people at that Dodgers game, but how many actually kept their tickets? Not many. You know, even if there were still 10,000 tickets around, for example, okay, 20%. Compare that to the amount of baseballs that Mike Trout has signed or jerseys Joe Montana has signed. Well above 10,000, okay? There's no more 1988 World Series tickets being made. Uh, number three, they can be graded and autographed just like cards. This adds tremendous value to the ticket. PSA will grade your ticket just like to do the cards. Imagine having that 1988 World Series ticket signed by Kirk Gibson. And then on top of that, let's say you had Vince Scully who called the game or Tommy Lasorda who managed it. Then having PSA grade the autographs at 10, the ticket at eight. You know, all those things can customize your ticket and add value. Number four, they're definitely pieces of art. Now, I'm not a big art fan, okay? So don't try to you know, bring up a Picasso or anything like that. I'm not gonna know anything about that, okay? I do not claim to be an art expert, 
but I can recognize a piece of art when I see one. And many of these tickets have superb artwork and layouts that are pleasing to look at. Boy, I sound like a sound like an art snob there, don't I? Ple they're pleasing to look at. I mean, they're not just a photo of a player, but you know, sometimes they have an image of the stadium or some unique fonts and text that make each ticket unique in its kind of own pieces of art. I can definitely appreciate that. And number five, this is probably a big one on why tickets have become so popular lately, is the tickets tell a, a story. And not just of the game. We've talked about that already. You know, there's definitely a story behind every single game and every ticket here. That's obvious. But there's also a story behind it on why there are so few of a ticket available. You know, for example, the Chicago Cubs Steve Bartman game where he got in Moises Alou way of catching that foul ball, thus leading to the Cubs loss. And then of course the Cubs ultimately didn't get to the World Series that year. Everyone remembers that game. You know, why is this ticket so hard to find? Well, <laughs> because Cubs fans basically were pissed at the game and threw away their tickets. So there, you know, there's these backstories onto why tickets are harder to find than others. And also the chase to find a rare ticket also keeps ticket collectors motivated and constantly in touch with the market. All right, let's move on to number two. You know, is this a fad? Are tickets actually collectible? And I think you could tell by some of the topics that I brought up under number one. You know, I personally don't think so. You know, tickets have been around for 100 plus years. They've been collected for some time. You just didn't know about it since it wasn't as mainstream as it is now. As with any industry where there are hardcore collectors and there are hardcore ticket collectors 100%, and rare items being sold for high dollar amounts, you know, that industry tends to be healthy. It tends to be moving in a positive direction. You know, every time a rare ticket gets found uh, or it's uh, a, a popular ticket is sold at an auction and it brings a new high sales price, uh, it brings new attention to the industry. You know, plus with a ticket's emotional connection to a fan, there will always be someone interested in collecting or buying that special ticket from an event that means a ton to them. All right, number three, let's move on to the types of tickets to buy. And, and this this part of the of today's video, I had a lot of fun doing here because it's got like a personal touch to me here and something that I think everybody can do in their lives. And you know, your your goal for you know the tickets really depends on what your you know, ultimate goal is. Okay. Buying your first ever ticket to a baseball game you went to with your dad has zero value to anyone else but you. However, having you and your dad both autograph that ticket, now that's a cool collective right there. Again, totally unique to you, but this is some stuff you can think about outside of the box when it comes to tickets. I did something similar with my oldest daughter when I took her to her first Royals game. Uh, she won tickets with perfect school attendance that year, so they gave her some Royals tickets. And uh, I had the tickets framed up with a bunch of photos from the game. Super cool. Absolutely love the piece. One on one piece and only important to me and her. But I would argue that pieces like this are just as important, if not more important, than the investment pieces that you buy. With that being said, what types of tickets hold the most value in the industry? Well, you guessed it, the ones around special moments that tell a story ingrained in sports history. That 1988 World Series home run by Kirk Gibson, a ticket from Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game, one from the Steve Bartman Moises Alou game. Those are the ones from the moments that people really remember. Those tickets are obviously very, very popular. Outside of that, debut tickets have become very popular. These have sort of become uh, similar to a player's rookie card uh, I, in the uh, you know in the ticket market. You know I, I don't I don't really mind them so much, but unless it's a LeBron James debut ticket or someone that had a ton of hype around their first game, I would much rather have a ticket that is around a particular moment. Other moments that are you know important that you can collect a player's first home run. Or a day that they hit, um, you know, hit for the cycle for the first time, or scored 50 points. You know, those can all be collectible as well. You know, they're not for every collector, but they offer a cheaper alternative in some cases where you know, quote unquote, the moment or debut tickets may have gotten out of your price range. 
You know, as with anything I've talked about on this show, you do you. Buy what interests you, what you think is cool and interesting. You know, don't like tickets, that's fine too. They're not for everybody. Just don't be that guy that brings someone else down because you don't like them. And number four, what's the future of the ticket market look like? You know, I still think there's plenty of room for growth. And I know that, that seems easy to say, and it seems like every collectible market says that. Oh, to the moon, we're going to the moon, everybody, you know. Uh, I don't know why we picked the moon anyway. There's there's farther places away that we can go to that we know about, but everybody says we're going to the moon because I guess we've been to the moon. But uh, I don't. Know. I, I say this because the ticket market you know, hasn't had as much celebrity endorsement as say the sports card market has. Example being Drake opening up boxes of cards with Ken Golden or Logan Paul sporting his Pokemon card at WrestleMania. If you get a big celebrity behind the ticket market, things could really really take off quickly. However, right now the ticket market is generally very small compared to the sports card market. There is opportunity for PSA to improve their slabs also. Seems <laughs> some slabs are so big, like what? It's like they have more space around the, the ticket than the actual size of the ticket. But it'd be nice if they all kind of fit in snug slabs like the cards do. I get it, the tickets are all different sizes, so it makes it hard for PSA to have molds for all that kind of stuff. I mean, I totally get it. Uh, it is very cool that PSA puts on their slab label info that the inf uh, information about the actual moment of that ticket. That to me really makes the slab so cool when you can just look at that slab label and know everything that you need to know about that ticket. And lastly, I, I think there's an opportunity for the teams to keep the tickets alive. For example, if a player hits his 500th home run on a day, all the, you know, the tickets are digital, so there's no actual hard copies is print up a limited edition of say 500 tickets you know actual tickets that are numbered just like you know when you would go to the game you know and still print them up the same way and sell those on the mob website sort of like a like a tops now card but for tickets you know after that field of dreams game uh, they did that where you can buy those replica tickets but those weren't those weren't numbered and they weren't uh, there you know, thousands of those were printed up and it wasn't done in a cool display you know, I'm talking about they did like a high-end collectible with like a certificate of authenticity and it was uh, slabbed by PSA with a cool label on there. I think those would be really cool and a way to kind of keep the ticket market kind of alive in the modern era. So hope you guys like today's topic and tickets are, are really, really cool. I enjoy them. But again, if they're not for you, hey, don't worry about it. You know, collect what you like. That's always the most important thing. And the second most important thing is don't bring anybody else down that likes to collect stuff like that. Again, be the cool guy in the, on, the, on the block and encourage everybody. And again, collect what you like to collect. Again, visit the website, powersportsmobility.com. You can also give me a follow over there on Instagram at Powers Autographs. And I will see you on the next episode.